you have an inalienable right to privacy? Our next guest thinks so. In fact, he created the definitive encryption tool, Pretty Good Privacy, or PGP. So good, you got him in trouble with the government. He's here to share his views on cryptography and privacy. The creator of PGP, ladies and gentlemen, Phil Zimmerman. I'm so glad to have you on the screen, Savers. It's, it's wonderful to meet you. How did you get started doing PGP? What was the... How did that begin? Well, during the 1980s, I was an activist in the peace movement. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, the peace movement was uh, had a sort of an adversarial relationship with the White House. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah. And that was, I think, Richard Nixon and the enemies. <laughs> <list>. <laughs> well, that was actually the Reagan White House. but Oh, you uh, <laughs> wasn't that far, far back. Okay. But, uh, but, uh, Same uh, problem. I, I thought it would be a good idea for uh, using to use cryptography to protect mailing lists yep. and bulletin board transmissions and things like that. So so you could continue your activism. You created a way to hide that information that you were exchanging. Yeah, I didn't have time to work on it much in the 80s, uh, but I began to work on it full time uh, around 1990. Yeah. Well, always with the intent to make it a, a free program or well, at first I thought it would be good to find a way to make money at it. Right. Uh, and I began working on it thinking that I, I would have some kind of shareware thing or trying to make money out of it. I hadn't figured out how I was going to make the money out right. of it. Right. Figured, it, you know, build it first and then they'll Right. Um, but halfway through the development cycle in 91, uh, uh, the Senate was considering legislation that would, that looked like it was going to be illegal to have strong cryptography. Right. The FBI, the government, felt that strong cryptography was a threat to national security because terrorists criminals could use it and hide their activities, and I guess peace activists, hide their activities uh, from the government. Well, that's true. And, and when it looked like they were going to move in that direction to try to move against strong cryptography, I decided to give it away for free, hoping that by widespread deployment, it would make it harder for the government to make it illegal for ordinary people to have something they already had. What was the state of cryptography before PGP? Was it crackable? I mean, was the government able to break into this stuff? Before PGP, there was no way for two ordinary people to communicate securely over long distances. The NSA or the FBI or the CIA could eventually unencrypt that data. Basically. Yeah, yeah. The, the strongest crypto software you could get at that time had the 56-bit DES right. as the algorithm. And that's... Right. That, it's very easy for them to break. A couple of minutes for a big NSA supercomputer. Yeah. What is the state now with PGP? How good is that encryption? How do you know? Well, the NSA is not telling you, for sure. We can infer some things from the work that's been done in academic cryptography. We use the very best algorithms, right? Uh, or I, I chose the best algorithms to put into that PGP. were currently out there, and yeah. and and also later when we we made an industry standard out of it and chose just the very best algorithms for that. Right. Uh, we certainly don't use anything that that has any known weaknesses. But they could throw a lot of computing power at it and still maybe break it? The computing power alone is not enough. Uh, you know, with uh, the key sizes being what they are, you could certainly outrun Moore's Law. It's bigger than the computers. They just yeah. make the key bigger and the computer takes more time to solve it. It takes too much time, geological time. Really? Yeah. Well, that, that, that's encouraging. Now, the government didn't feel that way, though. They, they really didn't like the idea. In fact, they started to go after you. Uh, what happened there? Well, um, the government tried to take the position that, the, uh, that this is a, a military technology that shouldn't be exported. Right. So for three years, I was under criminal investigation. Um, uh, uh, would, uh, the, they thought I had violated the Arms Export Control Act. Did you fight this on your own? Did you have help? Yeah, I, well, I had uh, people donating money to my legal defense fund, right. and I had a bunch of lawyers helping me pro bono. Right. And some of them, I mean, my lead lawyer charged money, but I had a waiting list of lawyers waiting to work for free on the... Because they believed in the, uh, the notion. Yeah. Is there a right to privacy in this country? Oh, absolutely. You know, if you look at our Bill of Rights, the right to privacy is spread interstitially through the Bill of Rights. It's in the Fourth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment, even the First Amendment. Uh, the, there's, uh, you know, the, there's a lot of parts of the Bill of Rights that contain elements of the right to privacy. But you recognize the need for police organizations also to penetrate the security and the secrecy of criminals, don't you? Well, yeah, uh, but they have other means of doing that. There, there are surveillance technologies available to them. You know, these crimes leave their footprints in the real world. All right. Uh, and, and very few crimes are solved just from wiretapping. In fact, very few crimes are solved by wiretapping. Right. There aren't that many wire, federal wiretaps every year, actually. Yeah. yeah, and of course, we we think that there are many wiretaps that are done without court orders. But, but even so, uh, not that much wiretapping is used to solve crimes. 
So you believe that PGP is used more by the good guys than the bad guys. But, I mean, obviously, if you're a terrorist or a drug runner, you're going to want to use PGP, don't you think? Yeah. Um, and Do you worry about them using I, your technology? I do worry about that, but I can't think of a way of making that technology available to everyone without also making it available to criminals. Government dropped its case. They did in 96, and I started a company to, um, to market the product, and um, after a couple of years, sold that company to another company, right. Network, Network Associates. Associates. Right. And, and you had to work for them for three years contractually. You just ended that. Oh, no, I didn't have any contract. You didn't. Oh, you didn't. I just stayed with it because you felt like it. they had my baby. They had the source <laughs> code for PGP. But you've left. Well, yeah, recently I left, and uh, now I'm working for Hushmail, a, a company that does web-based encrypted email. Yeah, I love Hushmail. It makes it very easy, but you don't have to know. You don't have to know a lot about what you're doing. You don't have to integrate it with your email or integrate it. It's a lot easier to use, yeah. and that's something that we've struggled with for years with PGP. We've right. made it easier to use, but there are still some conceptual hurdles for a lot of users. And with web-based encrypted email, you download a Java applet to your browser. The encryption is all done in the applet. Your private key is never exposed right. to anyone else. It's stored on the server, but the server can't get to it because it's encrypted with your passphrase. The passphrase is never sent to the server. Anyway, it's a it's a nice architecture. It's a lot easier for it's the It's very user. private, yeah. That's hushmail.com. So you're going to be working with them to help them make it more secure. They're, they're, are, they're migrating to the open, they're going to use the PGP. open PGP standard, cool. the same protocols the PGP uses, and I'm going to help them make that migration. There are other encryption standards out there. Are they as good as PGP in general? Well, is there anything as good as PGP? <laughs> if you could be honest. Um, you know, PGP was was created with a different mission in mind. A lot of commercial software that existed at the time when PGP was created was just intended to help businesses protect themselves from other businesses. Right. Other businesses don't have any significant cryptanalytic capabilities. 56 bits is plenty if you don't want Macy's to know what uh, Gimbal's is exactly, doing. Exactly, right. Yeah. And, but PGP was a human rights project from the beginning. Right. And, and by the way, you must... In that case, we want to keep out major governments. You must be very gratified because, and I'm sure you've heard these stories, I've heard many stories of of uh, people fighting uh, corrupt governments in South America, all over the world, using PGP to continue their efforts. It's done what you intended it to do. Yes, every human rights organization in the world today uses PGP. The White House uses it. Really? Um, uh, That's interesting. The Vatican uses it. Uh, organized crime uses it, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but uh, ordinary people use it. In theory, you know, PGP uses this, this notion that it's very difficult to factor primes, and, and the harder it is, the larger the numbers that are involved, the harder it is. But it's a mathematical theory it's based on. Uh, and some have said maybe someday somebody's going to come up with a crack. Do you think that's conceivable? Well, it's conceivable, um, but, you know, these problems have been around for centuries, and mathematicians have been unable to solve them. They've, they've found ways to speed up their efforts, right. to speed up the, uh, the solutions, right. but not in ways that... that substantially matters to uh, uh, crypto algorithms it's, it's, that depend on them. It's conceivable but unlikely, in other words. I'm not going to make base my career plans on that. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm glad you have the career plans you had, and you're going to continue with PGP and continue to help uh, those who need privacy be able to uh, find it. And, uh, well, if organized crime and the government uses it, I guess that's just part of the price we have to pay for freedom. <laughs> Phil, I thank you very much for uh, joining us. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Phil Zimmerman, the creator of Pretty Good Privacy has done a pretty good job in protecting all of us. If you want to know more about Phil and uh, PGP, his website is web.mit.edu/prz.